Welcome to Grace Lutheran Church in Cincinnati. I'm Pastor Greg Enterline. I uh, wanted to give a couple announcements before our service today. First of all, Happy Mother's Day. We give thanks today for our mothers in all days. Pray for your mother today. Call your mother today. Um, happy Mother's Day. Also check out our website, our YouTube site for our different activities and options that we have. Uh, at this point, we are still eyeing a return and praying for a return to worship service on May 31st, but we encourage folks to stay over six feet apart. Uh, please wear a mask if you can and continue to provide virtual. We will continue to provide church, virtual church and streaming options. The bulletin is posted on www.gracemen.org so you can follow along with our service. Check out our website, YouTube site, Facebook page for continued updates and resources. Also, we are going to be having a carry out community dinner this Tuesday from 5.30 to 6.30. Uh, that's this Tuesday. It'll be a carry out uh, community dinner from 5.30 to, to 6.30. That covers our announcements for this morning. And we hope you enjoy our worship service. We begin with our opening hymn, Let All Mortal Flesh Keep Silence. Enjoy your worship today.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the Word and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the Kyrie. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For all this holy house and all who offer here and elsewhere their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. O God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our first reading is from Acts chapter 6 and selected sections from chapter 7. Now in these days, when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenists arose, the Greeks, against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching in the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and wisdom, whom we appoint to, to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and the ministry of the word. And what they said pleased the whole gathering. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith in the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and, Pro, uh, and Procurus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenius, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. These they sent before the apostles, and they prayed and laid hands on them. And the word of God uh, continued to increase, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. And many of the and great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of grace and power, was doing great wonders and signs among the people. Then some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, and out of Cyrenians and of the Alexandrians and of those from Sicily and Asia, rose up and disputed with Stephen. And Stephen said, Brothers and fathers, hear me. You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resisted the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did your fathers which of the prophets did not your fathers persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, who you have, have now betrayed and murdered, you who received the law as delivered by angels, and did not keep it. 
Now, when they heard these things, they were enraged and they ground their teeth at him. But he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with loud voice and stopped their ears and rushed together at him. Then they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. And as they were stoning Stephen, they called out, Lord, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from 1 Peter chapter 2. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up to salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, a living stone, rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellences of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. This is the basis for our message this morning. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also. And you know the place, the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the father. How can you say, show us the father? Do you not believe that I am in the father and the father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that my Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. 
Amen. We continue with our hymn, Alleluia, Jesus is Risen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Plenty of small business owners happily pass on restaurants or practices to their relatives. Kids often pick up on the passions of their parents. And they observe what they're parents are doing or pick up the skills and approach and feel of a particular line of work. It doesn't always work out that way, but often it's like father, like son. Or we could probably think of our fathers or maybe even more appropriately our mothers and think of some things that we picked up from them. Maybe it wasn't a job, but a mannerism or uh, putting Worcester sauce in chili uh, like my wife does. Um, does it because that's what her mom does and it works. Uh, and there's probably lots of uh, circumstances like that that you can think of. Things that you do because your parents do them. Well, today's theme is like father, like son. Uh, because uh, Jesus' will was in line with his father's. He's not a rebellious teenager. He's 
more like a son following in the family business. There's numerous examples throughout John's gospel of this that fit this like father, like son theme. John chapter 1, right in the beginning. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only son who is himself God as an in, as, and is in closest relationship with the father has made him known. John chapter 3. The father loves the son and has placed everything in his hands. John chapter 5, just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the Son gives life to whom he is pleased to give it. Jesus is carrying on the family business. Jesus, after all, does things the same way his Father does. He displays the same power over creation, calming storms, healing diseases, raising the dead. Like Yahweh, he's powerful to overcome opposition and his enemies. Jesus desires that people repent and trust in him, yet he is merciful and compassionate, an oft-repeated Old Testament refrain. Today's lesson takes place on the eve of his death as Jesus has more instances of like father, like son. Jesus is giving some last-minute instructions and encouragement before his time has come. He's going away, he says, but then he'll come back to the disciples and then go to his father. Well, the disciples are confused, but Jesus is talking about his death, resurrection, and ascensions, and ascension, even if the disciples won't realize it until after they observe it. And next, he says, you know the way to the place where I am going. Well, Jesus almost seems to be goading Thomas into asking a question, and Thomas obliges, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Ah, but you do know the way, Jesus replies. Now, the disciples didn't know that they knew the way, but Jesus is the way. Knowing Jesus is knowing the Father. It's knowing the way to eternity and salvation as well. Even if you are not confident, even if you have doubts and fears, even if you don't know for sure, you do know the way. After all, you believe in Jesus, and he is our way. We don't know the how. I have no earthly idea how Jesus will transform our lowly bodies to be like his heavenly bodies. And like Thomas, we often get caught up worrying about the immediate future, not God's future promises. Like Thomas, we say, we don't know what's happening or where you're leading us. What's next, God? When will we have church in the same way or a vacation or a vaccine? There's lots of discussions about how to get back to our way of life. We might not, but as Christians, we have a way of life that is not compromised or in any doubt. Jesus' reply to Thomas is relevant to us still today. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Christianity does not promise to be able to see the future in specific details, but it is about seeing Jesus. Jesus is with us. He is with you wherever you go, even to the very end of the age. Jesus helps us along the way, even if he doesn't Tell us everything we'd like to know along the way. However, you have what is necessary. Your future is secure. Just continue to trust in your Savior. Make sure you aren't so obsessed with what you don't know that you lose track of what you do know. Don't be so concerned with what God hasn't told you that you forget to treasure what he has told you in Jesus. Because knowing Jesus is synonymous with knowing the Father. People who observed Jesus began to make this connection, and they did it often even before they believed in Jesus or put their trust in him. Nicodemus, for instance, says, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come for God, from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you were doing if God were not with him. Nicodemus doesn't believe in Jesus yet, but he knows he's from God. 
The man born blind similarly testifies before the Pharisees, even though he doesn't know, even know who Jesus is. He says, we know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly man who does his will. Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. Reading John's gospel up to this point, it's hard to come to any other conclusion. Jesus is clearly sent from God. Now, Yahweh historically sent prophets like Moses or Elijah with accompanying signs and great wonders, and Jesus outdid them all. If you don't believe me, Jesus tells Thomas, at least believe in the miracles. On the other hand, God does not perform miracles for those who profane his holy name or who oppose his will. Instead, false prophets are always eventually found out. They're struck with blindness, exile, sickness, and sometimes some pretty stupendous and creative deaths. Well, Jeremiah, and for example, is arguing with the false prophet Hananiah, said in summary, the prophets typically have had to prophesy destruction and punishment because, after all, the prophets were instituted and sent to correct a wayward people. You predict peace, Hananiah, which I, Jeremiah says, I would love to see it. But the prophet who prophesies peace will be recognized as the one truly sent by the Lord only if his prediction comes true. Jesus, who said peace to the disciples upon his return. The test for any biblical prophet, though, is to see if their predictions come true. Yahweh won't back a false prophet, oh, only a true prophet. In fact, he instructed the Israelites in the Old Testament repeatedly to kill those who were bold enough to make false claims, who, those who were false prophets who said, thus saith the Lord, and made predictions, but then they were wrong. Perhaps this was on the mind of the chief priests when they have Jesus on trial. They surely wanted to think Jesus was a false prophet. There was just one small problem. Uh, they couldn't think of or come up with anybody to find any prophecies that he'd made that weren't true which they uh, struggled to do. Jesus had undeniably performed many miracles, some of them right in front of them, and, and he'd had an uncannily accurate uh, interpretation of people's hearts and minds. Uh, they eventually settle on a charge of Jesus' predicting the temple's destruction, which comes true later, by the way, and, and so they condemn him and, and also uh, for profaning God's holy name. So this is the charge for which uh, they condemn him as a blasphemer and prophet. Um, oh, wait, wait. Uh, th this is the charge that sticks for the Jewish council. Jesus claims to be the Son of Man coming at the right hand of the Father. The high priest claims this is blasphemy, and the council declares him worthy of death. While Rome kills him for claiming to be a king, the Pharisees charge against Jesus uh, is because he profanes God's holy name, uh, and he is a false prophet. In the midst of their loss and uh, hurt, the disciples themselves must have wondered if Jesus was indeed a charlatan or a fool. Uh, he, was he getting a death he deserved? Was he truly going to be sitting at the right hand of God ruling? However corrupt and illegitimate they were, the highest ruling council of God's people had just condemned and killed Jesus as a blasphemer. It's not the miracles or the teachings for which Jesus is officially condemned by the Sanhedrin, but for claiming to be sent from the Almighty and coming in his name. For doing, how do we know who is right? Was Jesus a blasphemer or a fool? Or was he in the Father, as he says in our lesson for today, even as the Father was in him, on the same page, working in the family business towards the same objective? Well, thankfully, God has made his judgment doubly clear when he raised Jesus back to life. True prophets throughout the Old Testament are proven right because God delivers them from their enemies. A true prophet could be identified by their predictions coming true. Well, Jesus' resurrection was a double endorsement 
uh, by the father of Jesus' ministry and claims. Remember, God wouldn't do miracles for a false prophet. He certainly wouldn't raise a false prophet back up to life. From a, an Old Testament perspective, that would be ridiculous. Jesus was delivered from his enemies. God came to his rescue. He also predicted, Jesus did, that he would be betrayed, killed, and raised. Even his enemies are aware of these predictions ahead of time. His resurrection is both rescue by God and astoundingly his own prediction of his death and resurrection coming true. The crowds, if you remember, had jeered. He trusts God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. Well, God did rescue Jesus. He just does, he's not beholden to our claims or our timing. He didn't rescue Jesus right then, but he did rescue him in the resurrection. And that's why we can be confident and secure, even if all we have is Jesus. You know the way. You know the truth. You know the life. You may be confused at Thomas or the disciples at times, but don't worry, because you still know the way. Like father, like son. If Jesus had been sent, has been sent to die for your deliverance and your baptism, the forgiveness you hear, the, uh, and the Lord's Supper are some promises that it was indeed for you. And if that's true, then you can be assured of God's forgiveness for you. The Father has sent the Son, so rest assured you are loved by the Almighty and Triune God, and He will be with you to the very end of the age. He is the way, He is the truth, He is the life. In Jesus' name, amen. Typically, we'd be collecting, offering, and now, and once again, a quick reminder that we encourage you to try out our online giving program or uh, to mail in your checks. Please consider trying. It's a program that's pretty smooth and, and easy, no harder than paying any other bill online. Um, we continue now with the prayers of the church. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are our way, our truth, our life. Help us to hold on to you in the midst of uh, whatever may come our way in this life, even in these uncertain times, Lord. We know that we have the way of life in Christ our Lord. Pray that you watch over us, guard us, and preserve us. Uh, Lord, we also do pray that as we live in this world, that you would, if it be or will, have mercy upon us and upon this hurting world and our nation uh, in particular. Um, we pray that you would watch over all those whose job it is to make decisions, uh, all those who are in authority. We pray that you would give them wisdom and discernment as they make difficult choices. Uh, we pray that you would continue to watch over all citizens as well, that you would um, give us wisdom and, and uh, help us to uh, continue to be compassionate. And, and uh, uh, we pray that you would help us in, as individuals navigate our, our choices in this difficult time as well. Uh, we ask that you would give us more, uh, that you would bless the efforts of scientists and doctors and epidemiologists uh, trying to figure out um, and understand this disease. We pray that you would give us insight uh, so that we can know how to act. Uh, we pray that you be with all nurses and doctors and all frontline workers, all Americans and those around the world. Um, we thank you that uh, you have prepared a place for us in our Father's house. Uh, we thank you for that, through paving the way through your death and resurrection, opening the way of life to us on Easter. Uh, we pray that you watch over us until that day when you call us home to live with uh, you uh, for all eternity. I ask that you be with us as uh, in all in the world in, in terms of not only our physical and mental health, but also in terms of people's spiritual health, well, we pray that you would give the church wisdom, give leaders and clarity and, and opportunities and wisdom on how to act. And um, we pray that you would help us to share the gospel in both old ways and new ways as appropriate. And that we would also be placed to do good work and, and help uh, uh, those who are hurting, in particular those who have been more affected um, by uh, all that's been going on. We pray especially that you be with the 
those who are sick, um, those dealing with cancer, the, the mentally ill, the homeless, depressed, and everyone else, Lord, who's been adversely affected by social distancing, job loss, or instability uh, due to uncertain times. Um, we pray also especially for uh, those whom we name now uh, who could use an extra measure uh, of your guidance and presence. Be with uh, Billy Beinkemper, Mary Ann Bender, Elaine Cheesebrew, uh, Dave and Linda Isley, Esther Goldfuss, Rachel Hopkins, Becky Stamp, Kamenberg, Linda McCabe, uh, Terry McCabe, Nancy Niehaus, Donna Nimmo, Lester Rampage, Ken Ross, Rita Sohn, Becky Stamper, David Stamper, Ruth Thomas, and Clyde Wallenweber. These and all others we bring before you, Heavenly Father, knowing that you hear us for the name of our Lord, for the sake of your name of, uh, of Christ our Lord. We pray that you would watch over us in all our needs as individuals as well. Give us strength, uh, give us patience, give us um, wisdom as well, and uh, we thank you for the blessings and help us to remember those and to give thanks to you for those positive ways in which uh, you have blessed us. We pray all these things in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. <laughs> Continue with our closing hymn, Thine the Amen, Thine the Praise. Thine.